Hi, I am Nick from Noah Labs. Due to our fifth anniversary, we are doing an interview with the CEO, Alex Muravsky. Why did you decide to establish Noah Labs? Um, yeah, so I got my first soldering station in, in Mighty Meter with 10 years, with my first robot with 12 years out of a chocolate box, which was like very exciting. I learned also programming by myself, first in C, C++, C Sharp, and then Java. Um, so then I decided to go, of course, for a technical uh, study. So I studied engineering, mechatronical engineering, where I learned mechanical, electronic, and software um, to be able to build cars, spaceships, robots, all the things I liked. After that, I actually worked for a while at BMW and Airbus, which gave me a lot of experience and insight into real-world applications and products. But I figured out quite early that working for a big enterprise is sort of not my thing, because you are a very small wheel in a really big machinery. So you are like you don't you see just a very small part of, of the whole product. So I decided actually to focus more on, let's say, on, on accessories, on gadgets, on type of products which basically you can oversee within a single person or a single team. Um, however, at that point of time, I realized quite early that even I studied all the things to make a full product by myself. So the electronic, the mechanic, the software, all the other things. So even I learned this all, I figured out that my day has only 24 hours. So I need actually a team to really build products, which is coming with all the industrial design, all the engineering on mechanic, electronic, firmware side, all the preparation for supply chain, everything else. So I see, I've seen that even for myself, there was a need actually to build up a team, to get connected to supply chain, to be able to bring products from idea to market. Um, I came to Shenzhen like five and a half years ago within a German program which sent me basically here. So it was a little bit by luck or by accident that I ended here. But I figured out very early that whatever Silicon Valley is for software, Shenzhen is for hardware. So I decided to stay here and to start Noah Labs, so basically my first company. I had quite uh, early Toby, who is in the moment our CTO and running the whole R&D team. Also I had quite early the next one or two other guys to start building up that team that I needed for myself. Um, however, we realized very early that I'm not the only one, or we are not the only one who do have this need. So we realized quite early that nearly every startup or SME from USA, from Europe has the same need. So they have a great idea, they want to build something which is changing the world, but they don't have the resources, they don't have the experience. They need either to build up a team or they need access to someone like us, who is supporting us basically with every single phase of the product life cycle to make it happen. Can you describe us your beginnings with Noah Labs? Looking back at the last five years, I must say that the first six or nine months have been really tough. So we basically lived together in a small apartment, having three bedrooms where we basically lived and slept. We had a living room set up with three, four, five, later even eight computers, doing our first PCB design, setting up websites, doing business card, all the business registration which was necessary, and already working on the first products for customers. And I remember that literally every month I worried, how can I pay this rent? How can I pay my hardworking people? How can I actually get this here from the ground? But I must say, after like, like six to nine months, actually more and more clients came to us because we did a good job. So they called us because someone else recommended them, hey, there's this company, Noah Lab, sitting in Shenzhen, they're really doing a good job, hey, you should uh, talk with them if you need something like that. So we've seen that more and more customers are coming to us, that the projects are getting bigger, that our team is actually growing. So after one year, we basically moved from this little tiny apartment now into a real office with like nearly 300 uh, square meters, had now really a real business setup, real machinery, and so on to now make actually a, a real product development. The R&D team grew from basically two, three engineers which did everything into now dedicated sub-teams which are doing just mechanic, just electronic, just firmware development, app or cloud development. We built up real supply chain management team to work dedicated just on finding suppliers, negotiating with them, taking care of quality control and all the other things which happen. What are the most important milestones of Noah Labs in the past five years? I must say that the most important milestones in the last five years have been definitely um, first for me making the decision to stop working for a big enterprise or company and now really making the jump to be entrepreneur, to build a startup, even knowing that most of the companies or the most startups are dying literally within the first one or two years. 
So making this jump was definitely one of the most important milestones for me. Then of course immediately followed by hiring the first guy. So basically getting someone on board I knew a little bit, I worked a little bit with before was on the one side an uh, interesting opportunity, a chance, but of course also a risk that they maybe try to trust the wrong person or that something is going wrong. But for whatever reason, it turned out that it was the right decision. Uh, Toby, who I hired as first person, helped me actually a lot in set up the first basic business, get office and everything all together. Um, then I must say the next bigger milestone was actually getting, for example, Nomiku as first customer for the Subi cooking device, literally just a few months later, getting the Lumio, so this this magic book, which you can open and close and get the first product completely from, from development over prototyping into mass production with all the optimizations in between. Uh, a further milestone for me was definitely like after the first year where now we have been able to rent a real office, hire a real team, put them in, in a real environment without fearing how to pay salaries. Then actually just one year later our company grew already from, from 10 people after one year to more than 25 or 30 people, which means they even do not fit anymore in that office. So we have been already on a level where, as I said, we had to scale, we had to move into a bigger office to be able to accommodate all the people, which was, again, for me, actually a very happy thing to see, knowing how much I worried within the first four, one year, how to pay the rent for this little tiny apartment, how to pay the salaries, which have been really low at that point of time, now actually being able really to pay like 20 or 30 people without much effort, and also being able to actually have an office where everyone has enough space, has two screens and can really focus on working instead of struggling with how to survive. Mm. A few additional milestones which definitely uh, happened along the way have been the few startups or co-foundings we have been involved. So Makeblock was actually the first one where I've been involved quite early after coming to China, being also part of the accelerator round, so basically of the first accelerator round ever, uh, getting all the experience, getting all the connections, making the first uh, experience how easy but also how difficult it can be having a co-founder, having a partner, having directors, investors and all the other things. Literally uh, along the way then Senec was, was basically the second co-found where either I as a person plus also Noah Labs' company was involved. Also there basically we had a few, a few very good months developing together, working together, being aligned in the same direction but at some point basically had to make the decision either keep struggling and discussing or basically splitting in a peaceful way that basically both companies can go their directions. Then of course, then one of the biggest co-founds we as a company have been involved was the next spec where we basically worked together first just with two German guys but literally later on an entire team uh, to build this modular smartphone case with all the modules, getting it connected to Android and iOS, to the cloud and everything else, basically working together, first in the same office, even under the same company, but later on getting investment, spinning it off as a separate legal entity, getting additional co-founders or directors on board, and then actually at some point also making literally the cut into two independent companies, which are yeah running their business in the moment. Can you tell us a bit more about establishing business development and marketing department of Nolabs? I must say that this is a very interesting question. So I have been um, surprised by myself that till one and a half or two years ago, our company had actually no active business development, no active marketing, no active sales. So till that point of time, our company was growing, products have been coming to us, new customers have been coming to us just because of recommendations, all they found us on the internet, and just we did a good job. So which was like really surprising for me how much we've been able to grow without active business development and marketing. But I must say I'm really happy that literally like one and a half or two years ago we got our first business development manager, Chris, at that point of time, who basically took over part of my business development work, started really actively to go to events, do active marketing, take care of social media accounts, start working on a new website and so on, and step by step building an entire team which is in the moment taking care all the creativity part of all the growth not only for our company but also for our customers so designing package designing products designing websites doing marketing material for social media going out to exhibitions joining all these meetings with customers which are on the one side very interesting of course with all the diversity of customers from all over the world but of course also very time consuming so here i'm really happy that we have now this additional department within our company so that basically they can focus on actively developing our company and the direction on the business development and marketing side while now I and the other departments can literally focus then on the other things they are good. 
What are the projects you would like to highlight in the past five years? So, I, I must say that there have been at least uh, two projects which have been very interesting for me personally. So on the one side was Lumio, which was surprisingly challenging as a low-tech product. So Lumio is not containing any chip, any no, no MCU. So no firmware, no app, no cloud connectivity. It's actually, from a technical perspective, a very simple product. But it was interesting for me to see how challenging it was on the one side because of the customer was, was a designer, literally, so he was an architect, which came with a, a lot of interesting requirements, but also challenges about, oh my god, I want real wood. And then we provide real wood, so plywood, veneer, and all the other things based on the on the customer's requirements but then he's saying okay it is what i want but the color is not exactly what i'm looking for or the pattern is too big even for the leds the customer specified the color temperature we gave it to him and he said yes the color temperature is matching but the color is not exactly what i'm looking for so literally we had to go out and customize half million leds exactly for him so we had to take a golden sample of led he liked the most measure the spectrum then go to the factory and tell them I don't. I need half million LEDs, not just with that color temperature. I need exactly that color itself. And the interesting thing was that sitting in Shenzhen, in the middle of the Perva Delta, it is possible. The factory really customized half million LEDs just for our need. If I would be sitting in Germany, in America, or somewhere else, they would send me back and say, "Buy what is off the shelf in the warehouse." or don't buy anything. So we can't customize because we don't produce anything at all. Here in Shenzhen you can just make it happen, which is really surprising. Um, a second very interesting product for me was actually Nextpec, because basically here, not only being a design house for that company, but actually being an active co-founder and even running the company for a while, it was interesting for me and for the team to be actually involved in creating additional companies, spinning off a, not just the service provider, but the product company itself, a platform company, defining the architecture for actually quite complex products. So with all this modularity, all the modules, all the system behind it, working for different operating systems, being connected to the cloud, coming with all the different challenges, plus with the need to being open or prepared for the future, it actually came a lot with a lot of thinking and planning ahead of time into the future, which was just like very, very interesting to see. And also here it was basically the second time for me to actually build a startup or build a team from scratch to actually a size of 20, 30, 40 people before then basically I decided to, uh, to, to go out as active manager of the company, focus on Noah Labs and leave it basically to other people at that point of time to manage the company um, for the rest. What is the most interesting product you have ever built? Besides seeing a few products which I've been very, very interested in, I must say that in the moment the most interesting product for me is Noah Labs itself. So in the moment I see that we as Noah Labs, as a company, we build a product which is building products. So we are in the moment actually building a machinery which is focusing on every single step of the product life cycle and we are trying to optimize it to make it as efficient as possible, as reliable as possible, as scalable as possible, that this special clockwork is able to generate one product after the other. It doesn't matter if it's an IoT product, if it's smart home, if it's an accessory for a car, for a smartphone, for a toy, for a wearable device, for a medical device or something else. So in the moment, after seeing all these real physical products out there, focusing now on building this additional product in the background, which most customers are not seeing, but it's way more complex. Actually, this is something what is really challenging for me, very exciting, also because it is including the experience of all the people, all the departments we built up by now, and to actually get this now into workflows, into templates, into structures, into all the things, to really build that special system. What are the biggest achievements you had with Noah Labs? I must say that um, the biggest achievements I'm really proud of is A, have been able to start a company, turn this company profitable. So it's not just about surviving, really being profitable and growing was basically the second achievement. Third thing actually, getting a company within five years already on a size of close to 50 people. So right now more than 40 people sitting in this office or extending to a second office. So being already within five years uh, on, on such a size is compared to some companies, maybe small, but actually to most companies, startups as a niche out there, it is already quite a huge size. So I'm, I'm actually very happy, very proud of that. 
Um, the next thing... And that's without investors. Right? Exactly. So, ex exactly. So I, I must say that, that getting this on that level without any external investment, without any external directors or in influence from outside is something which is like not happening very often. So I'm, I'm really, really proud that we are already able uh, to get on this level. And I must say the last thing I would really like to underline are people. So I must say that, that it doesn't matter how many projects, how many products, how many clients, how many things we did. So without having all this passionate, energetic, motivated people here on board, which are taking responsibility, taking ownership, really driving things forward, bringing all the experience in and actually work together with me, work together with us in running this company, growing it and building it, this is actually something which, which you can't learn from a book, which you can't just find by hiring people from the street or from, from whatever hiring platforms. This is something what really takes time. You have to, to, you have to get connected, you have to get luck to connect to the right people. You need to have the, the right sense and actually feeling who might fit, who not. You might also need at some point to, to be able to trust your new people on board and allow them to make no decisions, allow them to stand, but maybe also to fail and then to try it again. And then of course at some point develop them over time, develop yourself over time to get actually on that level that you have this powerhouse which is not just experience, papers and documents but really people behind this who are running this, who are living this, who are bringing all these emotions and all those let's say soft skills which you can't define just by, by defining software code or defining template. So this is actually something what I'm really really proud of and really really happy that we have really that good density, good amount of people with passion, with energy, with responsibility that I and also our clients can trust us more and more, that we can scale more and more and that basically we can deliver products on time, on quality and on budget. Any message to past uh, and existing clients of No Labs? Thanks to all our dear clients for the last five years of making business together, of developing products, of you trusting us, we delivering to you and of growing all together. So I'm really looking forward for the next five years. We hopefully keep doing business together, are facing even more interesting and challenging projects and growing as we did in the past five years. Thank you for watching. If you want to get more videos from Noah Labs and content related to product development and manufacturing in China, click subscribe button right now.